Could I put an amendment on that? It would include hanging by a tree also. And, uh, and also, uh, I would like to sign on to your bill, sir. Once again, I would like to introduce the, the Bible as the state book. So you take these books out of the library. What are you going to do with them? You're going to put them in the street? Light them on fire? What, where, where are they going? I don't have a clue, but I would burn them. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I haven't given you all a history lesson in a while, and I want to give you a little history on homelessness. 1910, Hitler decided to live on the streets for a while. So for two years, Hitler lived on the streets and practiced his oratory and his body language and how to connect with the masses, and then went on to lead a life that got him in the history book. So a lot of these people, it's not a dead end. They can come out of this, these homeless camps and have a productive life, or in Hitler's case, a very unproductive life. I support this bill. Thank you. Ms. Barnett, you told us uh, earlier in your testimony, quote, we know more guns do not make students safer. That's My question true. simply is, can you tell me what study or data you rely upon for the truth of that statement? You know, we, we, get, we get information research from every town, and they get it from the CDC, from all kinds of uh, organizations. You just have to, I mean, you could go online to Mr. Google and look it up. Okay. Right. I agree, Dr. Bowden that it is those who support this fiction and this fantasy that a person can change their sex who are causing the harm that we see in children across this entire state. With all due respect, sir, it is not fiction or fantasy for my family. It is deeply personal. You don't understand. You don't truly understand why you're standing there today. You don't truly understand why I authored that resolution. Just because you don't get your way, you can't come to the well, bring your friends, and throw a temper tantrum with an adolescent bullhorn. What, and what you could do, you could maybe could file a piece of legislation that maybe you'd do that instead of sitting back and criticizing folks that's worked really hard for the past decade to do so. That might be a place to start. But certainly don't start by commandeering the well while we're conducting business here in this Tennessee General Assembly. That's why you're standing there, because of that temper tantrum that day, for that yearning to have attention. That's what you wanted. Well, you're getting it now. How many of you want to be spoken to that way? We're not talking about politics. We're not talking about even gun violence. How many of you would want to be spoken to that way? I don't personally want attention. What I want is attention on the issue of gun violence. But instead, we're here with the resolution you put up talking about expelling me for advocating for ending gun violence in the state of Tennessee. I'm curious if the sponsor had like has relationships or has spoken to anyone in the, uh, like who is transgender about this legislation and and tried to actually understand what the, their thoughts are. Thank you Mr. Speaker and no I have not but certainly had this bill in the committee and and heard testimony but the whole purpose of the bill again is to create that level playing field so that we don't discriminate against anyone but there's female athletes, especially on the college level, have trained all their lives to compete. And we just need to make sure that's a level playing field. And I understand some individuals may feel like they should be able to compete, but they have a built-in advantage. And this bill is all about a level playing field for our female athletes. But no, to, to answer the question, I have not spoken to anyone personally about the bill. How many... How many transgender athletes are competing in women's sports in Tennessee at the middle, high, or collegiate level? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I don't know of any in Tennessee, but we've certainly all seen them competing in other states. Leah Thomas, the swimmer that won the 500-meter freestyle, I believe, was what she won. He won. We saw that the track and field athletes in other states winning awards. So... So we have seen it happening in other states. I don't know of a personal example in Tennessee, but we don't want it to happen in Tennessee, and our female athletes uh, have unfair competition. And what he pointed to, first of all, was that there are over 70,000 people playing in sports in their state, and they had identified exactly four transgender youth who were playing, and exactly one who was playing in women's sports. And... 
I don't think there's any reason to think that the numbers here in Tennessee are all that different. But we're now just today. This is our second piece of legislation today to deal with this. But I, I want to read this, Mr. Speaker, and I'll submit the letter to the record. But after he talks about that, identifies the four kids. Four kids and only one of them playing girl sports. And that's what all of this is about. Four kids who aren't dominating or winning trophies or taking scholarships. Four kids who are just trying to find some friends and feel like they are part of something. Four kids trying to get through each day. And all the research shows that even a little acceptance and connection can reduce suicidality significantly. For that reason, as much as any other, I've taken this action, the veto, in the hope that we can continue to work together and find a better way. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Once again, I would like to introduce the, the Bible as the state book. It has influenced work of literature and pop culture. There have been more than 1,000 references or allusions to the Bible in Shakespeare's writings. The works of John Donne, Herman Milvale, and Ernest Hemingway draw on biblical themes. The Matrix is so full of biblical archetypes and references that, that there have been multiple books written about them. Harry Potter references the the Bible, some of Lady Gaga's songs in Born This Way. Dolly Parton's coat of many colors represents the story of Joseph in the Bible. And to tell me that it doesn't belong in our state is to tell me that we don't want God any longer in our country, which is what we're doing. We don't want God to rule us anymore. We'll leave our godly principles outside on the sidewalk and we'll come in and we'll decide that we're better than God is and we know more than what God does. Don't librarians currently decide what's appropriate to go in a library? And why are we usurping the authority of librarians and placing the state in the place of deciding what's appropriate and what's not for our children? Really not sure who is putting these books in our libraries. Um, yes, the librarians do have authority over that. They may be the ones that's actually signing off. We really don't know. Uh, but what we do know is there's been books that's been put in our libraries that are obscene in nature and certainly not uh, age appropriate for our children. Books that are pornographic, uh, books that we could not read on regular television or even out here, words that could be said to uh, the opposite sex that would be harassment, considered harassment. I just don't think a handful of people should determine that. We have used the Miller test, that's what librarians use, they're trained to make those determinations. History hasn't looked fondly on those who ban books or those who burn books. I, I'm not sure that's who we want to be included with. We turn the TV off when they say certain words, and uh, that's what we're doing in libraries. We're turning these books off that are not appropriate, that uses words that are very illicit, not only just words, but the, some of these books have drawings. I've seen them, and I'm sure that you have too, and uh, we would consider them XXX and pay a premium price to go see it at the movies. My name is Erica. I'm a resident of Williamson County. I have a PhD in neuroscience from Vanderbilt, and I'm a mom to three young kids. They're in my entire world. I would do anything for them. And I also happen to be one of the parents that this bill will label irresponsible, uninformed, and incapable of making decisions for my children, even criminal. So I want to ask you, do you know the medications that are on this bill? Do you know the side effects? Do you know which ones are irreversible? How do these side effects compare to other medications we give children? What are the outcomes for children denied these medications? Can you answer all of these questions in great detail? Because if you can't, then how can you sit there and tell me that you know more than me about the decisions to make for my own child? What are we basing this legislator on because, legislature on? Because it's not facts and it's not experts. It's fear, intolerance, and unwillingness to understand something that's different than yourself. This bill is one of dozens designed to strip transgender people of their rights. Let's call a spade a spade. They're being targeted and attacked 
and you are the Civil Justice Committee, and I challenge you to vote like it today. You use the term in your testimony, fear and intolerance. Is it your position, Dr. Bowden, that those who, based upon genetics and all of human history, believe that there are two sexes, male and female, and that no person or set of so-called medical professionals can change a person's sex from one to the other are afraid and intolerant. You recognize me. I think that's a philosophical question. Um, I respect everyone's backgrounds, opinions, and moral standpoint, but I think that that's an opinion. And I think that the statement that you just made should not be guiding legislature for people who may not believe that. You agree, Dr. Bowden, that the members of this body have an obligation to protect children in Tennessee from harm, correct? What about parents? Yes, so Representative Bolso, you're my representative. Um, what are you going to do to protect my child? Hey, one more question. Yes. If you thought Republicans had reached their lowest point, you're wrong. During a Tennessee House Criminal Justice Committee hearing, state lawmakers debated a bill that adds firing squads to the state's methods of execution. Some people, when they kill other people, when they commit these heinous crimes like I'm talking about, like first degree murder, they give up their right to life. But we need to make sure that they get these executions get done more quickly, and this is the most humane way, if you want to look at humane way, and the most effective way to do it is by a firing squad. Then, Representative Paul Sherrill wanted to add this amendment. Thank you, Chairman. And uh, thank you, Representative Powers, for bringing this. I think it's a very good idea. And I was just wondering about, uh, could I put an amendment on that? It would include hanging by a tree also. And, uh, and also, uh, I would like to sign on to your bill, sir. Thank you. Two days after the hearing, Cheryl gave his version of an apology and got blasted on the House floor. I'd like to say that uh, I regret that I used some very poor judgment in voicing my support of a colleague's bill in Criminal Justice Committee. My aggressive comments were unattended to convey my belief that for the cruelest and most horrendous crimes, a just society requires the death penalty in kind. Although a victim's family cannot be restored when an execution is carried out, a lesser punishment undermines the value we place on protecting life. When I heard the statement, I was sad and I was mad. At the same time, I couldn't believe that I was hearing that. And of all committees, a justice committee, the irony, a justice committee. What allowed me to hold my tongue at the time, because I try not to speak when I know that my emotions are going to displace my ration and my logic was Dr. King returning hate for hate only multiplies hate adding a deeper darkness to a night already devoid of stars I would challenge all of you who are like-minded, of goodwill, to do as I do, to make an effort to be better behind this. It's not only the representative who spoke those words who needs to work. All of us need to work, but those who are silent in the face of those comments really need to work. It evokes the sordid history of not just Tennessee, but of America, of those days when lynchings 
were a common practice. When due process was denied to black men whenever a white man decided to. And I don't need to hear anybody talk about it wasn't me, that I wasn't alive back then. Let's have a grown folks conversation. I wasn't alive back then either, but I can assure you that multi-generational trauma still exists, not in only myself, but in all black folks who are in America today. 